thanks for tuning in to the Prime Nostalgia, the podcast dedicated to entertainment from childhood. That's 80s, 90s, the latest 2000s. Because Prime know it all, and Lee Boy be wow. And he's from all that, dropping gems for you to find. So that's orange, that light is lying. Prime time is all the time. We talking about the classics, and there's so many. That's Lee Boy TV and P-R-I-M-E. Ow. What's up, people? It's me, the P-R-I-M-E, coming back with another episode of the PNP. I'm here with my co-host, Lee Boy uh, TV, obviously, so say what's hey, up. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? You know what I'm saying? Lee Boy in the building, as always, Prime Nostalgia Podcast. Man, I'm just excited to get into this movie. What's up, Prime? You got anything else to say before we introduce? Nah, I just want to introduce our guest. We got Miss Natalia Ross here. She's Nickelodeon royalty in a sense, because everybody knows her. So you gotta you gotta clap it up for. Her. Hey, I always do that. I always sound like Blues Clues when I do the horns. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you guys! Thank you all for having me. Yes, Natanya Ross in the building. Obviously, this is Nickelodeon fam, Nickelodeon legendary status. Um, and if you guys don't know, uh, she's from the Secret World of Al- Alex Mack. Uh, okay. Robin Russo, and she's got plenty of other things on her resume that we'll be talking about. But y'all know y'all came here for the Nickelodeon nostalgia. So yeah. thank you so much for being with us today. Yes, I'm so glad to be here with you guys. And I'm also Nickelodeon royalty. Oh, yeah. You know, Nickelodeon I, alumni. Oh, you know, I claim all that. Right yeah. here. <laughs> we got to stick together. Hey, I mean, that's we yeah. all we got. We it's all, all we got. We got <laughs> so I'm excited to hear what questions y'all have for me today. Okay, okay. I, I mean, I'm nervous. I'm excited. I, 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 let's do this, baby. Let's go. And so I'll just start off by, you know, we like to just catch the vibes at the Prime okay. Nostalgia Podcast. It won't be too much of a grilling, but we definitely have some common uh, history, background, things that we need to wow. explore for sure. Wait. We got a, we got a couple friends in high places. So wow, okay. Uh, okay. Prime, what are we starting off with, man? We want to get um, right into some Alex Mack. What you got? I, I want to start somewhere earlier. Uh, just real quick, just a little background. Mm-hmm. Last week. We did a little our reboot episode, right? And do you remember what my show was that I rebooted? Oh, uh, look, I didn't. Why are you gonna put me on the spot like that? Come anyway. on, man. You know I got kids and, <laughs> and show, other things that distract me. You know, the show <laughs> that I rebooted. Man. Um, head of the class, obviously. Oh my right god, right. here we go. And, Wait, okay. she was on head of the class. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. She wasn't on head of the class. When head of the class had a spinoff, and she was on a spinoff. Yes, Billy. Called Billy. And um. True. I, was like, I was very surprised because it was just she was obviously she looks different. She was younger. I was like, oh, she was in Billy, which is cool because Billy was a Billy was a cool show. Like I really would have wish it would have went on, but uh, just talk about. Can you talk about your experience with Billy and do people yeah. remember you from Billy at all? Like, do people even know? Yo, you guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, that's prime. I'll give him his credit. Y'all yeah. are good. Okay, so Billy is what brought me to California. So forever get grateful for that. Um, it's really like my first kind of starring role. Um, I yeah, I mean, I was. Can I cuss? I can cuss, right? Oh yeah, go for All it. All family oh, yeah. here. I was young as fuck. So, and I feel old as fuck now. So let me see like, how. <laughs> much I can tap into it, but I was, I was eight and a half when I booked it. By the time we went to pilot, then to series, I must've been like nine and a half. Cause I remember I turned 10 on the show and Johnny Galecki actually like rolled out this huge birthday cake and had the whole studio audience sing to me. So I do remember that. Do people still remember me from Billy? Um, like the real OGs, like ride or die fans. Like Prime, Prime's the OG. Never <laughs> left my side. And like, thank God for you guys, because you keep me relevant still. <laughs> so yes, I do still, I'll get tagged. You know, it's like a, the world of social media is crazy, right? Because I'll get tagged in all of this stuff, which it's, it's so special for me. I answer, I to the best of my ability, I try and answer all my fans and I try and repost as much as I can and when I catch it. And um, so, yeah, people remember that show. It was a bummer that it didn't, it didn't go longer. We were like sandwiched right in between Family Matters and 
Um, I think Perfect Strangers. And I'll give you guys the tea. The reason the show got canceled is because Billy Connolly started doing like the late night circuit and, um, you know, promoting Billy and all of that stuff. And uh, and he is kind of an uh, unfiltered, beautiful Scottish man that doesn't think about some of the things that he says. And I think it just pissed off the wrong people, honestly. And it was almost like a couple weeks after that whole like, um, you know, late night tour went went down that we got canceled, like out of nowhere. Okay. So that it wasn't like it. Super, it wasn't super hard to figure out what happened there because it was a good fucking show. Yeah, <laughs> it's real quick, good. Uh, real quick, when did you find out, or maybe if you're known from at that time, did you when did you find out it was like a spinoff type of show? I didn't even know it was a spinoff till you oh, just you didn't know. oh you just told me it was. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I uh. <laughs> I, you know, I was so young. I don't think I was like really cognizant of like what all of that meant. Really. I knew that he had been on this show head of the class that was really, really popular and that they had given him his own show. Basically. I didn't really know exactly what that meant. I was young. I'd never seen head of the class. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So and I don't you, know. And you said you're eight and a half. How were, how, how old were you when you started uh, getting into the business when you started acting? 18 months old. Mm, so you a lifer. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken, I've taken a nice little decade off and I can, I'm happy to share with you guys why. And I think some of it's pretty public and, you know, other times I feel super comfortable to share it on podcasts like this. Cause I know a lot of fans are listening and with your guys's promotion and my promotion of it, I'm happy to share my story, but yeah, a lifer for sure. Um, it's even saying it out loud is kind of crazy. Like 18 months old, that's wild. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, by the time I, my brain functioned well enough to even like understand what was going on around me, I feel like I had already found like a pretty significant amount of success in the entertainment industry. So it's been a wild ride <laughs> for sure. Oh yeah. And, yeah. um, and obviously, like we already said, we're going to be talking about Alex Mack, but I understand you're also on a project with Larissa ahead of time on, uh, was it Babysitter's Club? Babies? So, yeah, we did Babysitter's Club, um, like in between season two and three of Alex Mack. Okay. So yeah, Alex so Mack came first. Yeah. Right. Alex Mack came first. Yeah. And so, I have a, a crazy story with Alex Mack of how I got the, I mean, yes, it's a crazy story which I'm happy to share. I just want to, because you make, you made this joke on Instagram all the time. You were in Freaky Friday, right? I was. Why? <laughs> <laughs> the one no one's heard of. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Do, like, how was that experience? And then, like, have you ever had a moment of trying to explain to people? Because obviously there are so many, there's like, what like what the fuck like, it is even? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, Freaky Friday, um, Freaky, okay, couple things. Freaky Friday, um, it's interesting I'm wearing my glasses today because I don't, I like rarely wear them. But so Freaky Friday for me came at like that very pivotal time in a young woman's life where you're embarking on puberty. I like, I wasn't hot yet. Um, I was like kind of cute, I guess, but like just kind of, and in the 90s too, with that like bright orange red hair, it like wasn't dope like it is now. Like now it's dope. But back then it was like something that you got made fun of a lot for. So when I got Freaky Friday, a couple of really amazing things happened for me out of that film. One was I met what would become my best friend, Marla Sokoloff. Um, and we joke about it all the time. Two, the director of Freaky Friday is the director of Babysitter's Club. So as we're filming Freaky Friday, she's telling me and Marla, oh, I'm set to direct Babysitter's Club. I'm doing it right after this. You guys have parts in it. You have parts in it. You're both babysitters. And we're like, this is great. Marla had already had her own success with Full House and all of these other amazing things she was on. Um, I didn't know that this would be like a lifelong friendship I was about to create with this girl. 
Um, so that was amazing. And honestly, it's such a slept on version of Freaky Friday because the cast is fucking immaculate. If you look at it, Shelley Long, Gabby Hoffman, me and Marla, Andrew Keegan. I mean, in the 90s, do you get like much better than Andrew Keegan? No. Another friendship that would be created out of that film, which I was very grateful for. And um, so and we can get into Babysitter's Club in a little bit. But anyway, it turns out we didn't get roles of the babysitters but we were the OG nineties bad girls in the babysitters club. So that would be the second film that me and Marla got to do together. So it it was so impactful in so many different ways, but in that movie, I was still in this kind of box of where I always played like the weird friend, the nerdy friend, the not hot girl, (laughs) not the hot girl, not the bitch, you know, not always the best friend. Always always the, Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, God bless. I did it well. So I'm grateful for it. But in that movie, I'm like wearing the weirdest clothes. I have glasses that I didn't even need at that time yet. Now I'm old, like I said, so now I need glasses. Um, And, uh, and then, you know, you put me into this cast of really cool fucking young actors you know, and then there's Andrew Keegan and like every girl at that time, I'll never forget. It was like our first week of filming and I came home from set and Andrew had like left me a, a, a message on my voice mail machine or whatever those things were when you would like come home and chat. I couldn't believe it. I was like, does he like me? Oh my God. But like, I was always very cognizant that I wasn't like the hot girl you know? And so when I, when I get tagged and stuff from freaky Friday now, like, yes, I make the joke because it's not the Lindsay Lohan one and it's not like the original one. Um, you know, but I, I just like look at that girl and remember like what it just, what an innocent time that was where I was like still trying to figure myself out. It's also like, if you go back and watch the first season of Alex Mack, and then you watch the second season of Alex Mack, the physical transformation that I make is like, crazy. I go from like the girl that I looked like in the first season and freaky Friday to like all of a sudden now second season, Alex Mack, you're like, what the hell happened? This? It's like, I grew up overnight. And now I was like kind of in a different league. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's Robin. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Like, damn. Like, yeah. Like I got boobs. That's, and that's rocking Robin, Robin right there. Look. Exactly. Exactly. But I love freaky Friday. That movie will always be so special to me because of the friendships I made and it got us babysitters club and you know, now before we get into babysitters club, you talked yeah. about your being, um, you know, all your friends that you've made and you and you seem to have that common experience on all the sets and all the cast that you're yeah. you're with what is it about you that like just people want to link up like look, where's she at what's going on with Tanya? look uh, <laughs> because i heard some things about you oh i in, well, in, them, in them oak woods <laughs> you have to tell me and you could tell me on this podcast i i nothing will embarrass me I don't know what it is. I am a, I'm a Libra. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's funny that you said that too, because I'm still like best friends with Darius love to this day. He was just at my 40th birthday. It's so crazy that we're in our forties now. And, um, and he said something similar. He said something he, I mean, you've met Darius. Uh, yeah. I, I love Darius. Yeah. He, okay. And he's been on the podcast. Oh, he was yeah. on the podcast. That's right. That's mm-hmm. how I found you. Yes. 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 That's the connection. So if you know anything about Darius, you know that he should have and could still be president of the United States one day. Absolutely. He's the most charismatic um, uh, philanthropist. I mean, he's just everything. Right. And um, we clicked instantly. We were like best friends from the gate. And uh, he said something similar at my birthday, too, just that, like, I I think that one of my kind of blessings from God is that I have an innate ability to bring people together. So I tend to be like the glue, right? Of like all of these different groups and like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to like, it's hard. Cause like, I don't want to- I mean, you don't want to, yeah. You don't want to dig yourself up. Like I'm just the shit. Yeah, I'm just just the guy, I'm the one. (laughs) Yeah, I've I've always made friends easily. Um, I come from like a a kind of like a a shattered family background situation. So I think that like in every social setting I was ever in, I was always looking to recreate family somehow for myself that I didn't have at home. And it's interesting because 
in our adult years now, and I'm writing a book too. <laughs> we can get into that also. I signed all for all of that like a year ago, but it's interesting because just like five, six years ago, I sat down with Darius and I was like, I need to tell you like what was really going on at home, you know? And he had no idea. He's like, how the fuck did you keep all of that? Like to yourself, so to speak. Um, you know, so yeah, I think that to me, like, my friends have always been incredibly significant and, and I have nurtured those relationships and some of them have been like lifelong. And so, yeah, I don't know. I hope I answered that question. Okay. And I don't sound like an asshole. Like I'm trying to hype myself up, but I do know that's a skill. People see, I mean, people say that about you. Like you said, Darius said that about you. Um, you know, I didn't actually hear a personal story about you at the Oakwood. I just watched oh, okay. uh, the 20th anniversary of the oh, Alex Mack. Oh, Darius just went off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about, uh, and, yeah. yeah, he's talking about everything. But yeah. it was, um, and, and just from knowing other people that you know, the, your name does come up and it's always in a positive light. So uh, if you haven't heard it before, you know, people love you, Natanya. Well, and that's why you. You know, we had to have you come up today. That so. means a lot. Yeah. It always means a lot to hear. Right. I mean, Absolutely. we need to. Yeah. It means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, this is definitely off topic. Definitely about to probably just go left. But you got his TL shirt on. I just want to know. Favorite TLC song. <laughs> Oh, all that theme. No, I'm playing. <laughs> of course. I mean, there's so there's so many. I mean, like, there's so many TLC records that, like, represent a different chapter of my life. Like, even when we were doing Babysitter's Club, like, everybody was listening to Hole and Nirvana. And, like, I got down with that, too. But I was, like, listening to Crazy Sexy Cool, you know? And they were like, what the fuck are you listening to? I'm like, this is my shit. Like, this is, you know, so favorite song i don't know even like ooh on the tlc tip like the i mean i don't mean to make this like sound depressive or anything but like the second time i went to rehab we can talk about it uh that album and um and college dropout I, actually that's why i was so blown away by this whole um kanye documentary that I've just been spinning, i've been spinning that college dropout heavy recently <laughs> I mean, I played Spaceship like on repeat mm. over and over. I feel like that album and the TLC album like really got me through that 30 days for sure. So I, I don't know. Um, so, I, I um, it sounds like you use well. music for therapy. I mean, yeah. and, and you yeah. talked about let's let's talk about it since you brought it up. Yeah. I mean, go, uh, being in rehab and yeah. if you want to share what you went to rehab for and sure. yeah. um how you're still involved in recovery maybe and, yeah. and you know what it means to you to be able to to uh um yeah you know there's uh being a child actor is such like a delicate um beautiful complicated layered thing that I think it's just a very interesting process when like I said by the time you're able to like understand your surroundings you're already like on the way to being pretty famous. And then by the time you're 10, 11, 12 years old, you're famous, you know? And, um, you know, thank God in the nineties, we did not have this pressure of social media and TMZ and all of this shit that there is now, or else, um, you know, it would have probably been really bad for me, but yeah, but, you know, by the time I had kind of aged out a uh, of a lot of these parts I was getting, obviously I'm famous for being on a very, very, very famous, excuse me, Nickelodeon show. Um, kind of like my, my personal activities, like I, even at Oakwood and stuff like that, I was still like, okay. Like I was a good girl for the most part, but I come from a very complicated family background. Um, and yeah, by the time I was in like my mid twenties, I just couldn't really hold it together anymore. And I got involved, um, with some pretty serious drugs and, uh, and, and started going to rehab to try and better my life. And it just, you know, it wouldn't stick, it would stick. And it was just kind of this big thing, but now I've been in recovery long-term for a long time, almost a decade. And, um, and I am a director of a drug and alcohol treatment facility. So now I put people into treatment. Um, and I'm obviously very active in 12 step communities and, and kind of where I found my big passion is helping the homeless communities of Los Angeles. I post about it a lot. If either one of you want to get involved, I'm happy to like make that connection. And right now what we've been focusing on, I'm so blessed to have, um, a lot of 
um, child actor friends still, you know, like my friends from the Mighty Ducks or the Sandlot or whatever it is. And I get everybody involved because I want as much attention um, and to create as big of a platform as possible for it. And now kind of our mission has been raising money to buy tiny homes to get homeless people off of the streets of Los Angeles and into a tiny home. And not every homeless person, P.S., is like some drug addicted, transient person. A lot of it is untreated mental health, unmedicated um, you know, mental health, uh, circumstance, COVID. I mean, it just, it goes on and pride. on. So, some, some people just got pride, right? <laughs> pride. That's right. So I have kind of found my magic later on in life through service work. That has been what has helped me stay sober. Um, Amazing. but yeah, I mean, I had a rough fucking go my twenties. Um, I mean, you made it out looking great. I know that's not the measure of, you know, success in in that, in that nature, but (laughs) sure. Yeah. And, you know, and I got lucky too, that everyone just really kind of stuck by my side, you know, like all my friends, like I have so many of the same friends from when we were like kids acting to now and everyone just like stuck by my side. Um, and thank God, you know, I'm so grateful for that. So yeah, that's my story with that stuff. That is why I took such a long break from the entertainment industry. I had to find myself as a woman. I had to find myself as a human being. I had to um, maintain like a long-term permanent sobriety until I could even think about what I wanted to come back and do. And, and so, but here I am now, you know, I started dipping my toe in again, like five years ago and and mainly what it is looked like is a lot of personal appearances and autograph signings and now writing this book and doing a lot, a lot of podcasts um, and social media stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm back for the most part. Yeah, we back, we back, baby. Hey, yeah, we back. Got a, I got a similar story too. So we definitely going to have to connect because I'm, I'm a real big, it. real big advocate for child star rehabilitation. I call yeah. it, um, I've got a secret project with some of our friends that, and you know, I'm gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to be privy to this project now. I'm gonna have to I send hope you I'm a couple part of the emails. Project. I'm gonna have to send you a couple emails. <laughs> I, I would be offended if I'm not. <laughs> hey, well, we connected now. So, okay. Um, but yeah, man, it's been, you know, it's important that we definitely shine a light on what people like us go through because so yeah. much, you know, we, we reach a, a huge a height at such a young age and it seems like it's seemingly snatched away from us and it's yeah. uh it can become yeah. so traumatic um i you know i definitely had my bout with drugs and alcohol i similarly took many years out of the industry and i'm still you know i'm thinking about getting me an agent nowadays but yeah. still have not made any formal um you know attempts at getting back into the industry right. But um, yeah, it's something that it definitely needs to be, there needs to be a light shed on what we go through. So thank yeah. you for being an advocate. Yeah, yeah. It's important work and, and it's very important to, um, you know, because as child stars, it's just like, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I have a lot of friends who have been through similar stuff as us and um, have made it out on the other side. And some of their stories were so public that I was like, damn, like I didn't even experience a quarter of that. Like, I mean, I, I definitely got slammed on a lot of shit, you know, of in my twenties when I would get sober and then relapse. And then all of a sudden there's some like, you know, people magazine, like, Oh, she fucking did it again. Or is she dead? Is she alive? I mean, I definitely have my fair share of that kind of stuff, but I've seen some of my friends who have gone through it on like a viral level, even in the, just the last few years where it's like, yeah, we have to get involved and help each other because it's important because it's a camaraderie that like only somebody that has experienced that would understand, you know? Absolutely. And there's a way Um, and there's a way to find your worth outside of like being a famous person. That's the the key. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What are you going to say, Prime? I seen you try to get in. What's up? No, no. I have a question for I could ask it both of y'all technically. y'all. So obviously people expect nobody to not go through anything. And when you're going through something, people like even though fans, they don't know. Cause it's not there. I'm just not there now. Maybe ask some dumb questions. Like, go ahead. When are you gonna do this again? When are you gonna do yeah. that again? It's kind of like it's hard to like not let people down. But I just want to know how is 
getting through that part of it. It's like when people want to see you and stuff, but obviously yeah, it's to tough. Be- I mean, that's like probably the number one most asked question I get is like, are you going to start acting again? Or like, why did you stop acting? Or, you know, would you do this? Would you do that? And like, you know, I'm such a big believer in God and that like everything um, happens for a reason and there's no mistakes in God's universe. But like, I don't know. I mean, if um, like kind of like you said, like if a pre- opportunity presented itself to me and someone like we were up for an Alex Mack reboot for a while and all that got it instead. <laughs> Ah, we no, did. Kidding, kidding. I wasn't. Wait, you. It's all okay. I wasn't there. You can't blame it on me. I, I know. I know. I know. Me up. Look. And maybe we might still get it. I don't know. But like for a while, I was just like, listen, if they call, if Nickelodeon calls me and says, look, we're going back, like I'll be there, right? Or if someone thinks about me and they're like, hey, whatever happened to that girl? Let's get her in. The-? I would say yes, but I, 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 I haven't been actively pursuing anything. I've kind of taken like a different route in put getting my toe back in the water i you know i started just doing photo shoots and like those shoots turned out really well and they were getting some attention and then um i signed with a booking agent who was like you should be signing autographs and meeting your fans and i was like that's like a thing that happens and (laughs) my god it's like the craziest these comic cons and like all of that stuff so i started doing that and i started getting to kind of like travel around the country with my some of my best friends you know who were also signing and that was awesome and then this book opportunity presented itself and then I've been doing that so I'm just like I just do kind of like a slow hustle right where like I'm I I always have like something going on but you know am I like going out on auditions every single day no no no, that's why we quit because them damn auditions we didn't want to do that you know and then I think about it too I'm like damn I'm 40 now like I know what I went through back in the day and like how, oh, how like tough that can be with like certain things, especially as a woman. And I'm like, do I really want to like go through that again? I don't know. So yeah, to to answer your question, how do I answer that? I just kind of, I don't know. I guess it depends on the day and it depends on my mood, how I answer it, to be honest. Most of the time it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> and just... I would and I would say it's just triggering when someone just brings up all that or Alex Mack. It's like, oh, like, yeah, it's, I could have I could have been there. I could. I know. I know. I know. It is a little bit of like a, <laughs> a nail in the heart <laughs> for sure, especially like when you turn on the TV and like every other channel is one of your friends and they're right, like right. we're famous <laughs> now and you're like, what? But I gained a bunch of weight and a bunch like I did some crazy stuff just to mask that I started rapping. I'm like, do not associate me with With Nickelodeon or or Nickelodeon or all that. Yeah. No, I get it. I know. I know. I think a lot of us went through that. So I hope I answer that question. Okay. So yeah, man. Hey, yeah, Prime, don't forget about it, man. We're gonna go right into the break. I know you say you wanted to talk about all the Alex Mack stuff in the second half. So we'll be right back with the 20th anniversary talk. And we're gonna talk about everything Robin Russo. Y'all come right here to the Prime Nostalgia Podcast. Don't go nowhere. Be right back. A A A P N P folks, we are back with another Nickelodeon nostalgia legend, the Tanya Ross. We are about to get into Alex Mack because I know some of y'all just been waiting for Alex Mack, but hey, the first half got going crazy. She, this girl, she giving up the tea, y'all. Yeah, so, uh, go rewind and watch it again. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, so I wanted to get started off with the 20th anniversary because you talked about tiptoeing back into the business and you got writing and producing credits on this, and everyone's like crediting you with getting everybody together. Um, just tell us a little bit of background about how you got everyone together and was it your idea? And just yeah, just give us uh give us the tea because you know, all that we always looking to do another reunion. I might need some tips. Look. <laughs> Well, so the way it kind of all like got started was uh, there was a a fan who I guess I was friends with on Facebook who posted something about the Boy Meets World episode that I was in and like kind of said something about my character's name. So I had like wrote a nice little comment or whatever. And he actually DM'd me and said like, hey, have you guys ever done or thought about doing an Alex Mack reunion? Like people would flip out over that. I was like, no, Nickelodeon just nah, slept on worried. us. They ain't worried about all that. Uh, yeah, they did not care about that at all. But 
what I did was I called Darius and then I called Jason Strickland from the show. And, uh, and we said, well, let's like get together and just really talk about this and see what's up. So, so the three of us, and then Ben Smith, who played Lewis on the show, we all met, um, at a restaurant that I was actually just at today in the Valley. And, uh, we sat and talked for like five hours. I mean, it was crazy because all of us together hadn't been together in like 15 years, something crazy like that. And, and, uh, and we realized that we were not going to get any financial help from Viacom, Nicola, nothing. So we said, fuck it, let's just do it ourselves. And, um, so we scouted the location and we locked down that location and great Jason location I, city. Walls, yeah, right. we got, yeah, we got hooked up. We paid for everything. Um, and, uh, Jason and I kind of wrote it all out. And, uh, then I just slowly started calling everybody and, uh, and Larissa was kind of the toughest cause we knew she was on the East coast. So, you know, we, we realized that, as soon as we got her to say yes, like we were good to go. And, and we were, and uh, yeah, and it was special. It was really cool. And I needed a host and I had reached out to Kel and Kel was too expensive. <laughs> um, and Angelique's like, my let me write phone. down that note. Look, <laughs> yeah. And Angelique, Don't ask Kel, no. <laughs> I wanted Kel and Angelique. I wanted the two of them together because Alex Mack and all that were so heavily associated in that snake lineup. And, yeah we had grown up with all of them, you know, at least like the OG, OG, all that cast. And I mean, Elisa Reyes was like one of my closest friends. We were, since we were seven years old, six or seven, mm -hmm. like, so anyway, we couldn't get Kel. Um, so, but Angelique was like, you know, I probably can find someone else to do it with that it'll jive with. And we were very set on the fact that we wanted Angelique to, to host it. And that's just kind of, how it went down. And, um, so yeah, Darius, Jason and I all produced and funded and wrote it. And, uh, Jason has his own production company called in the light productions and his team came out and, and filmed it and, uh, and it turned out great and everyone showed up and producers, creators, directors. Um, I mean, it was crazy. So, and then we opened it up to like a limited amount of fans. No, yeah. Really? It, it, no, I was going to say it was amazing. Like I've been uh, lucky to be a part of a couple reunions with all that one at Kamikaze, one at Good Burger. And right. then we had one uh, just a Zoom reunion on the Prime Nostalgia podcast. We had about 15 I saw that. Cast members. Yeah, that was so. awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. So I could I could say I produced one, too. But yours was amazing. I encourage everyone to go check it out because Thank it's you. really damn near made for tv and it's a great time seeing everybody up there everyone looked great and by the end Darius was uh like the host so it, <laughs> he like turned into the host so always. it kind of makes sense that he was involved in, in always the so. now while you were saying your host phil i got a text from somebody i just want to read you what this says this is a question for you okay it says, who is your favorite person that's a friend from the show till this day in all caps Darius and did Darius text you that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but the but the but regardless, like I know because I know Darius texts in all caps. Um, <laughs> but also Darius, I mean, regardless if he texted that or not, Darius is my favorite person, not just from the show, but like from my childhood of all time. Like that is time. my guy. It was so crazy. I was at the uh, Once Upon a Time in LA recently, where Draco got stabbed. I was like right there it was fucking nuts but i ran into Darius's dad he was doing security that night or no he was uh he's a firefighter i forget but he was in uniform <laughs> he was there and i was like damn that's crazy so i like took a picture and sent it to Darius. i fucking love Darius. that's like that's my boy i love From him too i ain't gonna lie i mean i didn't I know I probably auditioned with him and was around him back in the day. We probably yeah. were put into the room as brothers or something. Um, but I'm just a fan of his spirit. Like, um, and so that's why I asked him to be on the podcast. I just love the guy and I barely know him. Definitely love everything he did about Tupac, everything around Tupac. He's Whoa, just like A1 incredible. in my book. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Darius Love forever. Yeah. And I actually got a text as well. 
for oh, you. Okay. Um, okay. Might as well. I mean, since you 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 pulled out yours from Angelique, she okay. says, um, "I'm extremely proud of you uh, and the woman you have become and still are becoming. Love you to infinity and beyond. If you had one superpower to help humanity, what would it be and why?" Oh, I fucking love her so much. That almost just made me cry, actually. She loves you. I'm too much Botox. I, I don't know. The, I don't know <laughs> if the tears will come out, but got to squeeze them out. <laughs> I know both of both of those people are just so significant to me. Um, if I had one superpower to help humanity, I don't know, like how you would fit. I don't know how you would make this into a superpower, but I think like the ability to um, like see people's hearts. So we could like eliminate judgment and we could eliminate hatred and we could eliminate like just fucked up shit to, so like, like if you have, you know, if, if you're in a bad, having a bad day or something and you're like, you know, rude to the fucking waiter that you like some flash would come over you to see like them at home with their five kids that they fucking hustle so hard for just shit like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I think we're so lacking of that or when you drive by a homeless person and in people that want to be like oh that's so fucking gross or whatever instead you see like in like a blink of an eye the entire trajectory of like where they were before they were homeless and like what all of the the factors that got them to actually like being a person that's houseless like stuff like that i think would be i think uh, i don't think we would live in the world that we live in today that's for sure. If we could like actually see into people's hearts and spirits and, and history. And empathize and empathize with them. Yeah. Right. And the yeah. histories that like people come from, you know, um, that, and like, obviously if I had like a billion dollars to like get everybody off the street, that would be great too. I would love that. Um, you know? Yeah. But yeah, there's my you answer. Mean- Was that Angelique's question? That was Angelique's question. Yes. Dang, Angelique. You know, she always got to get deep. You know, I Angelique. love you, baby. I love you. Yeah, that was a good she's one. A, she's always yeah. taking it to the next level. So yeah, I'm the best. So Prime, what's up, man? I think is it is uh, it? I want to talk about this. This I got one more question about the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Like, okay. Oh yeah. Let's get into uh, that. Obviously, you, you all did it yourselves pretty much. You kind of just had everything going. Um, what? member maybe surprise you the most by actually showing up mm. not because not because it's n- like nothing wrong just because you know like d- schedules are hard to get a hold of. schedules are hard and it was i think like 10 15 years since we had all been together at the same probably alexis fields <laughs> she at that point she's acting again now and fucking killing it but at that point i don't know that she was like that interested in doing that kind of stuff but like that's my first best friend ever in life. Right. And she was like, all right, bitch for you. I'll be there, you know? So, (laughs) um, maybe Alexis, uh, we were, you know, very honored that Larissa, like she flew herself out and we were like, well, out of the budget we'll do it. She's like, no, 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 I got it. Like, so, but yeah, surprised probably Alexis. Yeah. We're big fans of Alexis. I mean, she's been in so many nostalgic, um, iconic, projects that it's that whole just, family is like ridiculous. hollywood royalty yeah. exactly yeah. there's no way around it yeah she's yeah, the absolutely. best she just turned 40 too i can't believe it it's crazy it's insane mm-hmm. and don't Rock. look a day over 30 no right 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 <laughs> shout out to alexis look she uh she out there killing it man yeah. um and you just have so many great friends, man. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That that show up for you, and you've been around. Um, I loved what you did with that 20th anniversary. So so Thank kudos you. to you again. Once again, everybody go watch it. It's worth a couple spins. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping um, like LA Comic Con or one of those places does our 30th year anniversary. Um, we will make that happen somehow. We will make that happen. And and you said you had a booking agent. Do you ever see other cast members out there in these um in these Comic Con streets? <laughs> so I got Darius and Angelique both signed with him. It's been like you know with COVID, this signing world has been very weird and like 
they're trying to get in the actors that had been promised the show the year before. I mean, it's just tough, you know, but um, I know that my agent is working on trying to get like Nickelodeon crew together at these different signings and stuff. Um, you know, because Darius and I together are like a crazy team. I actually, I just made a TikTok. I can't even believe it. And like, I'm trying to go viral. I don't know how, um, but I'm trying. Keep going. You keep going. I don't know. I don't you know. Just keep going. I have no idea. But I saw that someone had, that was recently at my 40th birthday party had pieced together this like video of like all of these child actors that were kind of like doing speeches for me at my birthday or whatever. Darius, of course, started it off, of course. So if you guys have TikTok, look me up and find it. It's a really cool video, very nostalgic for sure. Um, but um, so, yeah, I mean, we're always, I'm always trying to, we're so good together, me and Darius and me and Darius Angelique too. Um, so, but do I see p- other people from my show? Was that the question? Um, guest stars, a lot of like Jason Marsden, like a lot of people that did guest spots on the show I see at signings, but my agent has created a kind of a very cool little, very iconic, like nineties team. So he's you got with the the guys from mighty. Too, right? What? You travel with the Ducks a lot, too. The Mighty Ducks, right? I do, yeah. So Sean Weiss is one of my best friends. So we got so lucky to have, you know, we get to go around the world and and uh, and do all of that together. And that's, listen, that's another, like, um, story of triumph, right? A guy who got fucking railed over the coals behind his addiction. So unfair that the media does this, but they love it. They love to do that to people. And, you know, and he was just like, anyway, regardless, so... Yeah, with the Ducks, all the guys from the Sandlot. Um, he had he just got like the some people from the Little Giants. We got Darius oh, Angelique. We have Danny Tamborelli, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Jonathan Lipnicki, who, in my opinion, is the most famous child actor of all time, and a good friend of mine who I love very much. Um, but you can come for me for that. I don't care. Like maybe Macaulay Culkin. I'm not sure, but there is no cuter kid than know. like the head weighs eight One human head weighs eight pounds from Jerry Maguire. Like, please. And like Mike Stewart little, come on crazy. So he has a crazy little team and we all get to like, kind of do a lot of these different shows together. Um, you know, I would love to do more Alex Mack reunion stuff like you guys did at, at, um, but it's you know, kamikaze, yeah. Kamikaze, so, and, and, come when it comes, you know. And, and that's why I kind of ask because uh, I could just see you guys. Obviously, you had the reunion in 2018, but shoot, people would want to see that every city, every year. I I'm know. sure. I'm I know. Sure. Your um, your lips to God's ears. Maybe right. you just manifested that into happening. We'll see. Absolutely. You know, um, when I see the Sandlot guys, they do all these shows together, and people lose their minds. You know. And I'm like, does anyone want to come over to my hey. table? Because it's all of them at once. And it's like, that's very powerful for somebody whose favorite movie growing up is The Sandlot, right? I mean, right. even for me, who like, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw The Sandlot, you know, I did a movie with Chauncey when I was 15 or whatever, um, who played Squints. But even me, sometimes when I see them all together, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, that's very special for the fans. And um so I think it, you're right. It would be incredibly special to have all of us together. So maybe I have to put my little producing mind around. Yeah, at least, at least for, for y'all, for y'all yeah. will make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so I just I just wanted to go ahead and, and, and you know, segue over into some a uh, couple Alex Mack. I mean, people, I'm sure people can watch you talk about Alex Mack everywhere. So we want to have a special interview for sure. But I just want to ask, how does... Now, your character, Robin Russo, Mm -hmm. she was very anti. She's a little bit, was she like goth? I don't know if she was goth. She was just like hipster, kind of. I mean, I guess like the original 90s um, goth Nickelodeon character. I don't really remember seeing that on Nickelodeon before Robin came around. I think she was like a fashion icon of the 90s for sure. She understood life in like a a different way than like kids that age were supposed to understand life. I think she like had her hands in the darker pockets of what life can actually be and feel like. And I think it was like a very good representation that um, 
you know, I mean, she was so true to herself. Like when I was a kid playing that character, I didn't understand how special she was until much later on in life. Now, as an adult, like when people tag me in like certain things with lines of, you know, and I look back at like some of the scenes, I'm just like, wow, this character is really special. And to this day, I get DMs or back in the day fan mail saying that like this character specifically helps them get through high school or they were very suicidal growing up and knowing there was somebody else um, on television representing kids feeling that way of like, you know, the glass um, half empty as opposed to half full was very significant and helpful to them. Um, But yeah, I would say like the OG Nickelodeon goth girl for sure. You know, for sure. Yeah, that's dope. And uh, I don't know if that's something that you um, specifically related to or is it was it like a cure no that's not you Nah, you was miss tlc and was, <laughs> you was out there bumping was cool. and grinding and dancing was, yeah, she was doing was all fucking, the dance you know yeah it. i was i was like <laughs> hip slick and cool from the day i could speak um i yeah i could not relate at all i was like some of the outfits they had me in i was, I was like oh this is the worst like i would go in the makeup trailer and they do my makeup i'd sneak off to my dressing room and always like add a little bit more like wherever I could like I was very rebellious and I was like I've always been a very free bird and it's kind of hard to like rein me in and yeah so I didn't relate to but as an adult I sure as fuck do (laughs) I'm like Mm -hmm. okay Robin knew what was up like from a very early age for sure so what is like uh because doing some research about it a Rooney runabout is probably the episode that people mention I guess the most about you but I I watched one earlier today when you were shaming Alex for wanting to be a a cheerleader um which was hilarious but what would be like one of your favorite episodes that you would maybe suggest people to watch of you or just maybe your favorite episode that you performed in for your own selfish reasons um I mean it's kind of a mixed bag because like all of season two I got to be with Alexis so Alexis and I were always together and pretty much every scene um season three again I make like another crazy like physical transformation like if you see me from like season to season I think I probably have the crate maybe Darius too but I think I probably have the craziest like physical transformation where I just look so so different and so different and so different and so different but all of season four was very special and I was actually just like writing about this part in the book that I'm writing is that um it was, we knew it was our last season going into it. We knew Larissa wanted to go to college. We knew we were the number one television kids, television show, like period. You know, we knew we, all that was like just about to come for us, but like, we were still, we still had that title and we knew it were, it was our last moments together, you know? And, and I was in all the episodes in season four, the other seasons, the reason why I wasn't in all the episodes is because I was always leaving to go do, they would let me out to go do, a guest spot here or a movie here or a TV movie or whatever season four. I was like, no, I'm here. I want to have every second I can with these people before this is it for us. So I think like all the episodes in season four were very special. I cannot, I, I have no memory of like episode names. I know people talk about the, the Rob, the Rooney runabout because, um, but I don't even think that's like my biggest episode really, but like, yeah, I'm doing like gym stunts or I don't even know. It wasn't even for some other reason. Cause people watching you bounce around or something. Maybe, but like, (laughs) sorry to disappoint, but that was a stunt double. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh man. But I'd say like uh, most of the episodes in season four are just very special. We brought in Will Estes that season um and he was the best and yeah so I don't know I don't have like a I think I was in like 60 episodes of Alex Mack out of the 84 or maybe like 65 really and um yeah I don't know man I don't have a good answer for that question no it's cool it's cool I mean because I think for you know for all that cast members it's probably a little bit different because it's like our favorite character we played. You and have we just skits. Remember. Yeah, your character. Yeah. Exactly. Like how many episodes of all that did you do? Do you remember? 
Uh, it's probably about 35, 40. It was, so three, you, uh, it was three seasons. Three seasons. Okay. Which is kind of like, that's a long time. I mean, other than like Josh Server or who I'm, who I'm also friends with, of course. Um, other than like Josh or Kel or Keenan, right? Like three seasons seems to be like, if you can hang in there three seasons, like that's a big deal on all that. Most people yeah, is yeah. one season or two seasons or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I always tell CJ in the cloudy nights, it was just a skit that I could remember. But yeah, I could see where you're saying like, oh, yeah. you know what? I was just having fun in my scenes with Alexis or yeah. uh, season four. We had a great time. So that's dope. I remember like because I get tagged in a lot of a lot of shit, you know, that's like hard to keep up with. But like if I see a certain outfit or if I see like a lineup of like me, Daris, Alexis, Larissa, or me, Daris, Larissa, or me, you know, whoever it is, me, Ben, and whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that scene. I remember those lines. Um, I remember that like, you know, monologue or whatever. Other than that, I mean, if I'm being honest, I haven't watched the show other than like little clips that I get tagged in, in a long time. <laughs> So if I went back and watched it, I'd probably have like better answers. Yeah. That's fair. You get it. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch. Yeah. I don't go back and watch. Flip on OG all that. No. No. I mean, I show my kids every once in a while, but other than that. Right. Yeah, exactly. When I get tagged in stuff, I remember better. But go check it out on daily motion. You can watch it if you don't. I don't know. I think it's on Paramount plus too. No, it's not. Like, what? It's not? Ah, oh, look, I didn't let the cat out the bag. Yeah, they be hating a little bit. But a little bit. I mean, all that's on, on there, right? Out. Is barely. all that Yeah, on we it? got barely. Not all the seasons. Barely. Okay. It starts at season two. They go from season two to season four. That's it? Ooh, I'm on four. I'm on four, that's baby. Okay, well, you made it into one at least. Yeah, I, I feel like Alex Mack will come out this year on Paramount+. Plus. It's just like... There was like a hashtag going around for a while, like where's Alex Mack? So it'll it's it'll come. I hope it does. I want those checks. <laughs> I mean, and you're right, though. It was um, absolutely I didn't realize that it was the number one kid show. But I know, um, you know, I was watching when she turned to that damn puddle. It was like magic every revolution every night. It was yeah. amazing. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I grew up watching all that before I got on, but yeah. I was watching Alex Mack every episode. And uh, I think that's why I felt like Darius was always my brother, because I was just watching yeah. Ray Alvarado uh, <laughs> having the time. Yeah, life. that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Always watched it. Yeah. Well, we are coming to the end. I just got this this last question slash comment slash whatever it is. I'm going to say. I loved your episode in Boy Meets World. That's all I'm going to say. So. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> My favorite show. And he your episode was one Meets of the best World, episodes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. You know what's crazy is I, I, I hear that so often. I don't know what it was about this specific episode that meant so much to people. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, it was their first make every series at some point has like a makeover episode where they take some like nerdy mm-hmm person and make them over into this beauty queen and we were the that was the first boy meets world episode to do i think first and only as far as i know and um it was like you know a pygmalion like uh you know world and then uh women asked boys to the dance and that whole thing i actually just saw Ryder and will at a um at a comic-con i did in uh, albuquerque a few months ago and and uh, and Ryder and I were talking about that episode. I mean, not to like, you know, shatter your dreams, but like in today's day and age, like that shit would not fly. You know, mm. like a like a ugly girl asks Corey Matthews to the dance, and like in order for him to like be okay with going to the dance with her, his best friend needs to turn her into a supermodel. Like that's fucked up. There's right. a lot of stuff that would not pass, obviously. Right. I mean, so much shit from the 90s would not fly today. But yeah, Ryder and I were talking about that. I thought it was really funny. But thank you. I mean, that means a lot. I get, I, I hear Ingrid Iverson all the time. I loved doing that show. I loved being on that episode. Um, I was, you know, very close with Ben Savage after that. And that show meant a lot to me. And, um, yeah, people still like rep that episode hard. 
I think what helps it the most is because obviously at the end she doesn't get with Corey. She goes and does her own thing. She still fucks like him that. over. It's so crazy. Yeah, it, that, I, I think know. that makes it funny. It's a twist. She never gets the girl, so it's like oh. I know. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good moment. And, uh, and yeah, and then before we close, also, you know, with this being Women's History Month, we wanted to definitely highlight some of the women that we know from Nickelodeon. I mean, there's so many stories, um, you know, entertainers that were on on Nickelodeon in the 90s, and you're definitely part of that history. So we wanted to cement you, and then hopefully we'll bring on some more of your friends. I'm sure you know everybody, so yeah. you don't know everyone else that we bring on, but yeah. Um, and I just want to give a shout out because Amanda Amanda Bynes is actually having her conservatorship hearing soon. And uh, just everyone that, you know, has a heart out there for the women of Nickelodeon, just keep yeah. her in her, your prayers as part yeah. of your uh, sorority. So, um, yeah, man, just have everyone, all, all of us child stars in your prayers. For really, That's right. really. I but, love that you said but, that. Um, That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then with that, I mean, tell the people where to find you. Yeah. So I am on Instagram. It's just at Natanya Ross. Um, Natanya is with a Y. If you don't know, I'm on TikTok now. Don't judge me for my lack of followers. I will blow that shit up. Just give me some time. Just also at Natanya Ross. And then I have a, a Facebook fan page, Natanya Ross. And, um, yeah, if there's anybody out there that uh, is doing these Comic Cons or anything, you can um, contact me through my agency at the Philadelphia Connection. And that's about it. And just keep an eye out for that book, probably uh, 2023, 2023. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. And then you guys know where to find me at Leeboy TV, LeeboyTV.com, Leeboy TV on youtube please follow me on youtube i'm you know i'm trying to do some reactions you know what i'm saying i'm trying to get that youtuber money out here you know what i'm saying yeah. please I'm, i ain't trying to go back to work no more he, y'all lord uh, help me help me he's on youtube um, working hard having his mic muted for like an hour hey oh, i did man. have if yeah go check me out on instagram I, yeah i was talking about freddie from the band for like 30 45 minutes with my mic on mute the whole oh, time no. But, oh no hey, we about to be right back at it tonight in fact i got some better stuff to talk about so yeah react Reactions on Lee Boy TV YouTube. Please check me out. Lee Boy TV everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Don't be laughing at me. You saw the face. You saw it was yeah. just a look of shame, disgust, embarrassment. Like but. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, KVNG Prime Time, and uh, Prime Nostalgia Pod on Instagram. Or it, yeah, Prime Nostalgia Pod on Instagram. And uh, we're going to get active on Twitter eventually. And um, from Natanya, from Lee Boy, from me. All I gotta say is prime time is all the time. All the time, baby. Go watch Alex Mack. That's the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Check out that old old school Alex Mack. Yeah, Daily Motion. If it ain't on Paramount Plus, you know, you go find it somewhere else. All right, y'all. We out. Prime time. All the time, baby. Thanks for tuning in to the Prime Nostalgia, the podcast dedicated to entertainment from childhood. That's 80s, 90s, the latest 2000s. Because Prime, you know it all, and Lee Boy be wow. And he's from all that, dropping gems for you to find. So that's orange, that light is lying. Prime time is all the time. We talking about the classics, and there's so many. That's Lee Boy TV and P-R-I-M-E. Ow.